kind of like three of these things. My guess is it's A, B, C, D, all of the above. So you read that question. <laughs> yes. If your mic now, on, not on radios like this one, but on the bigger radios, the mobile radios and the ones we have in our houses, we have a little gain control. It's called a microphone gain. Now what happens is if I like my microphone sitting right there, I might be too far. So what I do is I just set the microphone gain a little higher. So whatever it received, it amplifies it. Okay? Or if I like my microphone on my radio at home sitting really close, then I'll set the microphone gain down too low so I won't screw things up. Okay. So if your microphone gain is set too high, then when you transmit, your signal might become distorted. Yep, just like I said up here. Uh, no, there is no gain control on a handheld. You just don't have it. So when you have a handheld, you just can't decide to talk into it like this, and you can't decide to talk into it like this. What you do is you do a test with somebody, and you find out at your normal voice, you say, okay, I'm on here, one, two, three, test, one, two, three, four, test, one, two, three, four, and they will tell you, oh yeah, when you got to right there, that was that was the place to be. So, okay, so when you get the HTs, there's no microphone game. You have to decide how loud you talk and where you hold the radio thing. When operating a mobile, you, if, when operating a mobile, really you're told that your audio signal has a high pitch whine. Now this is a mobile radio, it's in a car. And someone says, hey, every time I hear you talk, there's, a, there's like a high pitch whine in the background of your audio. Oh, that noise is coming from your car's electrical system. It's coming from the alternator, okay? The alternator has a little frequency to it, and when it's keeping the charge on your battery, there's a little something happening, and then you get, so when you've got your radio connected to the battery, that little pitch from the alternator gets put into your radio and gets transmitted. So you've got to fix that. The source of the pitch winds and okay, I'll just give you that answer. When operating mobile, turn on the noise blanker to reduce the reduce hearing the high pitch whine. Some of the mobile radios have a little thing called a noise blanker. And what it does is it knows exactly what the, the whine frequency is. It knows what the whine frequency is of an alternator. And it can shut that down. It, it, can, it can cancel it out. And it can cancel out some other noise that comes from your engine. So that's what the noise blanker is on a mobile radio. These don't have it, and the radios in the house don't have it. The mobile radio function. Okay, <clears throat> this gets to be really tricky now. Fundamental overload. Now, this is when this is when radios cause interference to other things. This is what this is about. Okay. Fundamental overload is when nearby radio signals are very strong and cause interference to other frequencies. Okay, and you'll see this on the next chart. <clears throat> so. If I'm transmitting here, and you're listening to your AM radio, and you've got a little AM radio and you're listening to it, if I get close enough to your radio with this one, and I transmit, this energy can go inside of your radio, and all you're going to hear is, oh man, what happened? I I'm, I'm hearing a whole bunch of, ah. That's called fundamental overload. It just overloads your radio totally, okay? So a fundamental overall hope can happen to my AM, FM radio, or to my TV set. <coughs> These are things that I receive on. So when it happens to AM, FM radio, it's called RFI. What's that mean? Radio Frequency Interference. Okay. And here's an example. Let's say you're down on Hawthorne Boulevard at about 190th Street, and KMX 1070 has got their antenna right there behind the uh, Penske garage or whatever. Well. If you're not listening to 1070, if you're listening to some other station on AM, once you get close to their antennas, all of a sudden, they start interfering and you'll start hearing them on your radio, even though you're not tuned to them. Fundamental overload, okay? Okay, when it happens to a TV set, it's called TVI, television interference. If I get a radio of certain frequencies close enough to your TV antenna or your TV set, I can mess up what you hear and what you see on the television. You just mess it up. That's called television interference, which is not good either, okay? So let's go back to RFI. RFI can be reduced or eliminated by using different kinds of filters. So this is a memorizing thing. One's called a low-pass filter, one's called high-pass filters, okay? There's things called band rejection and band pass filters, and then there's called snap-on ferrite chokes, and we'll describe some of these on the next paper. These are filters that help RFI and it turns out TBI as well. Uh, they gave answers that work for both radio frequency interference and TV, but don't worry about that. And now I'm going to give you a, 
something here before we explain to you how the filters work. Are we getting close to the time? No, okay, good. Let's say I had a frequency of 51 megahertz. We're gonna talk about harmonics now. Uh, I could have a circuit that treated harmonics. But what's a harmonic? It's an even multiple. So a circuit could create two times this, 102, <coughs> three times this, 153, four times this, 204. Those are harmonics now of a given frequency. Just memorize that, okay? Now, so when radio frequency interference can be caused, so radio frequency can be caused by the following. It could be caused, let's say you've got a radio, and I'm going to come up here and I interfere with you. Well, it could be that I'm transmitting on the same frequency that you're listening to. That's called fundamental overload. Bingo. You might have a handheld radio. You're listening to 51 megahertz, and I could be over here at 51 megahertz, and I could interfere with you. Fundamental overload. Or it could be the harmonics. Uh, I could have a, you could be over here listening to uh, 153, and I'm over here at 50, using 51, but there's a mess in my radio. My radio is not only transmitting the fundamental, but it's transmitting the second, third, and fourth harmonics, which means I get a bad radio. Well, that means one of my harmonics is interfering with you. Or, could be from the other page, I'm just talking to that, and I've got spurious submissions that I'm interfering with. So these are three ways to interfere with someone else's radio. Okay, here we go. I've got a transmitter. Now, this is basically a transmitter that's going to be on the HF frequency. Okay, not the ones that you're talking about with the HF frequency. I've got a transmitter, i got an antenna, and I'm on this band right here, the 21 bit megahertz band, the 15 meter band. And let's say I've got a, a bad transmitter, it's got a problem. And the third harmonic is also coming out that antenna, which is not good. I'm trying to transmit on this. Well, what frequency is the third harmonic? 63. Where's 63? Oh, it's up in here. What's up in here? Television channels. So what's going to happen is, if my third harmonic is coming out, and it ain't supposed to be, let's say, uh, and my radio is not too far from your TV antenna, your TV is going to receive this crummy signal, and it's going to communicate. So if you're listening to that channel, channel probably 5 or channel 4, you're going to see interference on the, the television, and you're going to hear interference on the, the audio. Why? Because I'm giving you television interference, TDI. So how do I stop that? Well, I can put a filter in here. This is it. Plug the filter in. Here's what the filter does. The filter says, uh, well, if you have any signals all the way up to here, 100% of what you're transmitting will get to your intent. But any signals which are higher than this that come out of your transmitter will not get through. So it blocks all these harmonics that I could accidentally be transmitting. That's called a low-pass filter. So a low-pass filter is placed between the transmitter and the antenna. Okay? And what it helps me do is it helps me when I'm back here on the HF frequencies, it keeps me from interfering with television channels from my house and my local neighbor's house. Okay? So we talked about this. Where it, does, it passes everything here and unpasses everything here. Now, let's say that uh, you've got a ham radio operator next door who's transmitting here. He doesn't want to use one of these filters. What can you do with, at your TV set? Well, you put in what they call a high pass filter. So in between your TV antenna and your TV set, you put this little filter. And this little filter says, okay, when I'm watching channel 2 to 6 or 7 to 13 in these channels, these frequencies are way up here. This little device will let all these frequencies pass through to 100%. But anything that comes from down here, it blocks it. Okay. So, so if we have digital TV now, does this really matter? Um, does it affect digital TV? It, the, yes. The, the frequencies that are used by the digital TV are the same channels. So if it's academic that television was analog or digital, the issue is it's on the same frequencies. Mm -hmm. So, like, for instance, channel 2 is 54 to 60 megahertz. 6 megahertz wide. Channel 3 is 60 to 66. It's a digital signal, but it's there, and if I'm close enough with a lot of energy, 100 watts, 200 watts, I'm going to go right in your receiver, and I'm going to screw up what you're trying to see. Okay? Now, I might have 
less of a chance of screwing up a digital signal than I did the analog signal. That's part of, that's part of the answer for it. Okay, so there's no questions here, but I just want to explain to you high pass. And then uh, there's no questions here. Let's get right past this. This is called a band pass, where someone can actually buy a filter that just notches out one frequency. But there's no questions. So let's keep going. And there's no quite. Uh, there's one question. So we go. Okay. So let's assume that uh, it's called a band rejection filter. Okay. I've got my TV set, and uh, there's a guy who operates on one of these frequencies, the two meter band, and boy, every time he operates on that band, he mucks up my TV somehow. So there's actually filters that a person could buy called a band rejection filter that will let everything through except it'll notch out one little band. Now, where do you buy these? Who knows? This is more of the things you kind of talk about than you're going to do. A band rejection filter can be used to block fundamental overload in a nearby two meter band. Why? Because it's really close to these other ones. Okay. This is one of these things you want to remember. There's nothing up here. Uh, there's nothing here to remember. Let's just keep on going. Here we go. If your neighbor says your transmission is interfere with their TV set, okay, this is TBI. The first thing you do is you make sure that your station is operating promptly. Well, that's a bit big. Okay, but that's their first answer. The second thing, your TV set. Now, this, keep in mind, now, this is your neighbor who's saying there's a problem. Make sure that you're not interfering with your TV set or sets. So you've got two TV sets in a house, and your neighbor says, hey, you're interfering with my TV set. So you turn on your sets and you run your transmitters and produce. Am I interfering with my sets? If sets in your house are free from interference, then you need to, uh, are not free from interference, right? I'm, uh, if I'm interfering with one of my sets, oh, then it's my problem to solve the problem. Now, it could be many, many issues, okay? But if the sets in my house are okay, the problem is not my radio, okay? It's my neighbor's problem. Okay. So third, <clears throat> let's say that you still have a problem. Well, if you got cable TV, you might want to try tightening up the cable connectors. It may get broken cable or something like that. And I had that with one of my neighbors once. He said I was interfering with his TV set. And I have to make a long story short, I had the local cable company come and they found a loose connector up on the telephone pole leading into his house. That was the problem. So anyway, that's what you do there. And here's some other fixes, but let's not even go through them because there's no questions and we'll low in time here. Other interference. Telephone interference. Now, a lot of times uh, in years past, someone in my house would pick up the phone and start to talk, and if I was on the radio, they would hear me clear as a bell. Now, with the wireless phones these days, that's not it, but these were the cord phones, okay? So what you would do is the transmitter signal causes the phone to act like a receiver. This is the ones that have the cords on them. Oh, unplug your phone from the wall, you plug this little filter in, you plug the phone back into the little filter, guess what? That stopped it for the most part. These are called RF filters. So installing an RF filter at the telephone may cure some of these problems, okay? Okay, this one's kind of interesting, and I don't have a good answer for you. It says, if your neighbor, and this is one quick, if your neighbor has something referred to as a Part 15 device, which is causing harmful interference to your station, whatever that means, First, check your station to make sure that it meets the standards of good amateur practices. That's too vague. Work with your neighbor to identify the offending device. Uh-huh, sure. Inform your neighbor that the rules will require him to stop using the device if it causes interference. Good luck. Now, the answer is, what's a Part 15 device? I have no clue. But at one of my classes, someone said, oh, uh, your laptop is a Part 15 device. There's many, many Part 15 devices. I didn't have a clue. but. Uh, Someone's computer apparently can be one of these, but to me it's a little vague, so this is one of the A, B, C, D, all of the results. So just memorize the answer. <laughs> okay, if you're transmitting in a very close to another station, the audio from the other station speaker may get back into your microphone and cause feedback. So, forget about this for a second, but let's look, 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 look. let's say we got two handhelds. <clears throat> me and me and her, we each got one. And I get on and I'm talking to a repeater. And she's listening to that repeater. But when I'm talking, my audio is one to the repeater coming out her radio. But as long as I'm talking, when my voice comes out of her radio, back into here, I'm going to get feedback. So that's what that's about. You get two radios too close together. When one person's talking, the other one's listening to the same frequency, you get feedback. Okay? So RF feedback may sound like a garbled, distorted, or unintelligible transmission. Yeah, this sounds like a screech. Beep. That's what it sounds like. 
one way to avoid RF feedback is to get further away from the other station, like get farther away. So the audio from her radio doesn't get here when I'm transmitting and vice versa, okay? Uh, or, the, or you can simply turn off one of the radios. To reduce RF current from flowing, oh, this is a different subject now. This is, this is a memorizing answer. To reduce RF current from flowing on the shield of an audio cable, you use a ferrite choke. Memorize that answer, it's way too technical to get into. 